I want to, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot this morning. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions to start with, okay? The first question is, is how many of you have faced adversity in your life? And I want to see a show of hands. Every hand in here should be raised, right? The next question is a little bit more difficult. How many of you have handled it well? It's a little more difficult question, right? I mean, the truth is, is that we all face adversity in our lives. And God does, and never does God say that we won't face hardships or difficulties in our life. He doesn't. In fact, He tells us just the opposite. Over in John 16, 33, Jesus says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. He says, the world, In the world you will have tribulation. But He says, Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Jesus says, in this world, you will have tribulation. He didn't say that you might. He didn't say that it's a possibility. He said, in this life, in this world, you will have tribulation. So the question today isn't whether or not you will face adversity. The question is, is how will you handle it when it comes? Today we're going to be looking at, um, at an Old Testament character uh, who faced much adversity in his life, but always seemed to to come out on top of it, to overcome it. And that character is Joseph. Um, Joseph. So if you'll turn in your Bibles this morning to Genesis chapter 39, uh, we're going to read about a little bit about the life of Joseph. Uh, his story doesn't actually start in, in chapter 39 of Genesis. It actually starts in chapter 37. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of summarize to you guys a little bit about what's going on in chapter 30, 37 so that we can have a little bit better understanding about what's happening in chapter 39. Joseph was the second to the youngest son of Jacob. And uh, in, in Scripture it tells us in chapter 37, it tells us that, that he was, that he was uh, dear and near, he was important to Jacob. Uh, in fact, it tells us that he loved Joseph more than all the rest because he was given to him in his old age. And he was one of his sons, one of two sons of his wife, Rachel. We know that Rachel was dear to Jacob. I mean, Jacob faced much adversity uh, in winning the hand of, of Rachel and um, giving the, the ability to become his, her, her husband. So Rachel was near and dear to, to Jacob, and so was jo Joseph. Joseph was uh, loved and, 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 and very important in Jacob's life. We know that, that Joseph, in chapter 37, it tells us that Joseph um, had, two, had these two dreams. And in both of these dreams, he, he had these dreams that he was going to, uh, that his family, his, his brothers and his father as well, would bow down before him. And whenever he expressed these dreams to his brother and his father, of course, they didn't take it well and they rejected him. And already there was... Uh, there was hard feelings between uh, Joseph and his brothers because of this relationship that Joseph had with his father. So one day, Joseph, I mean Jacob, sends Joseph off to, to locate his brothers. They're, they're, all, they're over in Shechem, uh, tending to their father's sheep. And he, he calls Joseph to him and he sends Joseph to, to go check on his brothers. And So Joseph makes this journey and... He goes and he, he's looking for his brothers in Shechem and, and he finds that they're not there. And he finds somebody there and they tell him, no, your brothers have left there. And they have gone on to, uh, uh, let me get the name right, Dothan. They have gone on to Dothan. So then Joseph takes his journey to Dothan and he locates his brothers. And, and it tells us that as he's walking up to, to his brothers, and his brother sees him from a distance, and already they're, they're plotting his death, how they can kill him because of their, uh, their feelings towards him. They, they call him this dreamer, and whenever, <clears throat> and whenever jo Joseph comes their way, um, Joseph's older brother, uh, Reuben, steps in and he says, let's don't kill him, but let's take him, we'll throw him in this pit. And his intentions were, when his brothers were off doing their own thing, he was going to help Joseph and take him back to his father. But before he could do that, before he could do that, uh, they, they noticed a, a group of Ishmaelites coming, a band of Ishmaelites. And, and they said, it's more profitable for us to, 
uh, to sell our brother into slavery than it would be to kill him. So let's sell him into slavery. So Joseph is then sold into slavery and the Ishmaelites then take Joseph to Egypt and they sell him to Potiphar who was a captain of the guard of Pharaoh. And that brings us here to chapter 39. But before I go into reading to you some passages of scripture here, I want to, I want to make the point to you. I want to point this out to you or ask you another question. Did Joseph not face some great difficulty through this situation? Did he not face adversity here? I mean, did he not? I mean, to, can you imagine to be to experience that kind of rejection from your own family? To, for them to plot to kill you and then throw you into a pit and then sell you into slavery. I mean, surely this had to have been a difficult time for, for Joseph. He is facing great advers ad adversity here. And that's why these next couple of passages of Scripture just will make you think a little bit. How in the world, after facing what he had faced, uh, what kind of, how he could prosper and grow in his situation. And in verse 2, in verse 2 it says, the Lord was with Joseph. And if you have a pen, I want you to underline that. The Lord was with Joseph. And some of you might be thinking, are, are you serious? The, the Lord is with Joseph? I mean, he was thrown into a pit, rejected by his, his, his brothers, thrown into a pit. Their plan was to kill him, destroy him. He was sold into slavery, taken from his home, from this father who cared about him deeply. And yet this man, it was it's said of here in verse 2 that the Lord was with Joseph. In spite of his hardship and in spite of his adversity, the Lord was with Joseph. And it says that he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Listen, we all face hardships and difficulties in life. Every one of us, none of us are immune to adversity in our, in our lives. But really what defines us is how we handle those adversities. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure Joseph had a, had a choice to make. He, he, he probably came to a fork in the road and he could go left or he could go right. I mean, he could make the choice to fall into this pit of despair and sorrow and grief. Or he could take the other route to say, in spite of my circumstances, in spite of where I'm at, listen, I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm going to seek the Lord. It tells us that the Lord was with him and that the Lord, and listen, that, that everything that he did prospered in his hand because the Lord was with him. I mean, this, surely this wasn't his ideal situation. This wasn't his plan or his, his dream for his future to be a slave in Potiphar's house. Surely not. I mean, surely after receiving these dreams of his family bowing down before him, surely his thoughts were were greatness, you know. He was going to have be a great ruler, a great leader of some sorts. And now he's ended up as a slave to Potiphar. But yet everything that he did prospered at his hand because the Lord was with him. You know, let me tell you, church, this is a perfect example of how people watch us as, as believers, okay? As Christians. It says... And the master saw that the Lord was with him. And in other words, Potiphar saw something in Joseph that made him realize that, listen, the Lord is with this man. And we're talking about an unbeliever. We're talking about a pagan who noticed within this man, this young man, that something was different about him. And, and because everything that he touched, everything that he did prospered, this is something that the Lord must be with this young man. And it says in verse 4, it says, So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had put under his authority. You see, Joseph faced great adversity, but yet somehow he came out on the top of it. Amen? Why? Well, because the Lord was with him. Because the Lord was with him. 
But how many of you know that adversity comes and it goes? And then sometimes it comes again, right? I mean, we don't just face one tribulation or one difficulty in our lives and that's the it, you know, the end of it. I mean, sometimes life can feel like a roller coaster, right? Where it's full of ups and downs and twists and turns and sometimes we don't even know which way is up, right? Well, it's no different for Joshua, for Joseph. And Joseph was at this high point once again. He was first he went to a pit, and he was sold into slavery, and then he became master over his slave, uh, his master's house. But then, but then one day, Potiphar's wife sees, looks at Joseph, and she desires him, and she starts to tempt him and entice him, and he keeps refusing her and refusing her. Because of why? Well, because of his integrity, for one. He, he, did, he didn't want to dishonor his master. And for another, he didn't want to dishonor his God. He says, why should I lay with you and sin against my God? You see, the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph had a, a relationship with God. And he didn't want to do anything to hinder that. God had prospered him, taken him out of the pit. He gave him a place of, 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 of high standing within Potiphar's house. And, and he's like, I'm not going to do anything to hinder that. I'm not going to sin against my God. So he kept resisting and resisting. And she kept coming and tempting and tempting. And you know, this is a perfect example of how we are to resist temptation. Jo Joseph resisted temptation. It tells us in 1 Corinthians, Corinthians that... There is no sin that is, that is common to man that, um, that, we, that we encounter, that you and I encounter. And it says that God is faithful to right away of escape for us. That when we are tempted, we won't be tempted beyond what we can handle. God will provide a way of escape. And His way of escape for Joseph was Joseph fled. And when he fled, he left his garment behind him as she had a hold of him. And we know that that Potiphar's wife then goes to the men of the house and, and accuses Joseph of, 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 of assault. And, and then Joseph is in place in prison and went from one adversity to another, one hardship to another. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, what set Joseph apart is, is that, listen, when even in his adversity, even in his tribulation and his hardship, listen, he let his light so shine. He didn't let it hinder him from being a witness for his Lord, to being an example for others. And God prospered him and grew him in that, in every situation. And it was no different in this situation as he was placed into prison. And in, and in prison, it tells us once again, if you look at verse 21, it says, But the Lord was with Joseph, once again, and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And if you look down at verse 23, it says, The keeper of the prison did not look into, any, uh, look into anything that was under Joseph's authority, because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. See the similarities here? I mean, he faced his first hardship of being thrown in the pit, sold into slavery, and, and it tells us that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made everything that he did prosper at his hand. And for that reason, Potiphar placed him in a high position within his high household. He gave him complete authority over his household. But he goes from that high point back to another low point as he's accused of of assaulting Potiphar's wife and thrown into prison, but yet the Lord was with him, and yet the Lord made everything that, that he did prosper at his hand. And the, and, the, the, and the keeper of the prison saw how the Lord was with Joseph and how everything prospered at his hand and put him once again in a place of, in a position of authority, having complete authority over the prison. And the prisoners. See, when we face adversity, church, that's not the end of it. 
we must keep our eyes and our focus on our Lord and remember that He's with us. And maybe you're here today and you're thinking, you know what, Randy, you don't know what you don't know what I'm facing right now, what I'm dealing with. You don't know what I've had dealt with in the past. And, and you know what? I don't. I don't. But I've seen how the word Lord works, okay? In others' life, in my own personal life, and I'm telling you, if the Lord is with you, if the Lord is with you, you can overcome your adversity. He can deliver you from it. And listen, there's a, there's a time and a season for everything. It tells us in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, verse 1, Solomon writes, he says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. We are not exempted from hardship. We're not exempted from adversity in our lives. But if God is with us in it, then we can get through it. And listen, God can even make us prosper in our adversity. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Because listen, everything that we face in life, every hardship, every trial and difficulty is a time for us to grow, okay? To be strengthened in our faith. To grow in our understanding and our knowledge of who our Lord is. Joseph faced much adversity, but yet God prospered him where he was at. Adversity is not the end, okay? It's just part of the process as we are being set apart for God, as we are growing in Him, as we are learning from Him. We talked about last week about being yoked to Jesus and how when we're yoked to Him, we learn from Him. That's speaking to our discipleship as He's growing us. Well, part of that discipleship process is the fact that we face tribulations in our lives. Everything is for the purpose of our growth. Joseph, once again, found himself in a place of adversity, great tribulation, great hardship, but yet the, yard, the Lord prospered him and grew him where he was. He became head over the, the, the prison system, captain of the, of the, of the prisons, of prisoners, and, yard, and the Lord used him in that manner. And we know, if you look at it, continue on reading through verse 40, that there was uh, two other prisoners. There was uh, the butler, there, and there was the, uh, the, the, uh, um, the, the head chef, the chief chef, chief baker, who were in prison, and Pharaoh had thrown into prison. And they too had dreams, and, and Joseph heard about their dreams and said the Lord uh, is the interpreter and he interprets their dreams and they're, they are set free, they're gone, they're, they're brought to, to Pharaoh and uh, the, 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 the butler is, is it loses his life, he's hung and the chief uh, baker is spared just like Joseph had uh, interpreted their dreams and their dreams came to fruition and, and then later on we see where Pharaoh had had a dream, and and the the chief uh, the chief baker then told him that there's a man that can interpret your dream. So he calls Joseph to him, and Joseph gives him an interpretation of the of his dream. And 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 if you look down at verse uh, verse thirty eight of forty one, this is what Pharaoh has to say as about Joseph as he interprets this interprets this dream for him. In verse thirty eight, it says, and Pharaoh said to his servants. Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God? Once again, God delivers Joseph from his adversity, his hardship, and places him in a position of high authority. It tells us that Pharaoh puts, uh, puts, puts Joseph in a position over all the land, that there is no one above uh, Joseph except for Pharaoh, that he is directly under Pharaoh. And for seven years they have a, a, a they have a, a time a season of plenty, and then for seven years there's going to be a great uh, drought and a great uh, uh, famine. And then we see where Joseph marries uh, a woman from a of <coughs> the high priest of Potiphar. I can't say that word right, so I'm not even going to try. 
But you see how God has taken from one adversity to the next and how God has restored and how He has brought forth and healed and placed him in positions of authority once again. And how God has all done all of this because of why? Because, well, because the Lord was with Joseph. And, and I want to encourage you today that the Lord is with you, okay? Yes. If you're in your hardship and you're, you're in your time of adversity I, and you're a believer in the Lord, then listen, the Lord is with you. And you know, and he goes on, he, he marries, and then he has children, he has two sons. And You know, I've never, I've never put a whole lot of uh, thought into to names, I guess. I, when we named our children, you know, I didn't, we didn't try to seek out some deep meaning to, you know, for our reason, for our purpose of naming our children. Um, honestly, I tell you the truth, what I, when we named Ryan, we named him Ryan because... That was my alias as a teenager when I would go and visit my, my cousin in, in Dallas. <laughs> you know, when I was here, I was Randy, but when I was up there, I was Ryan. <laughs> and I had, a, I had a, a second degree black belt in karate, and I had a whole different reality over there in Dallas. <laughs> and I was a teenage boy, I was trying to impress the, the ladies, okay, just like any other teenage boy, right? But I, you know, Ryan was always one of my favorite names. So when Ryan was born, you know, we, we decided we were going to name Ryan Ryan. And uh, when we named Cody, it, it was nothing, you know, nothing great. I picked his name as well. Nikki gave me the privilege of doing that. And, and uh, I had a good friend in high school who his name was Cody. And, and Cody was this, he was a bodybuilder in school. He's one of the toughest dudes in school, you know. And uh, he, I mean, he did competitions in high school and could outlift anybody. So you know what? I said, you know, I'm going to name my son Cody. <laughs> you know, see, because uh, Cody was a cool dude, you know. So, you know, we named Cody Cody because of that reason. And and Cowboy, well, let me let you in on a little secret. His name's not really Cowboy. Okay? <laughs> Even though that's what everybody knows him as, is Cowboy. You know, that, that's not his birth name. That's not what we gave him at birth. He changed his name when he was, I don't know, maybe two, three years old. Uh, he changed it to Cowboy and wouldn't let us call him anything else. But uh, Nikki picked his name. She, his name is Jonathan Steele. Um, and she named him Jonathan because, you know, John is a prominent name in her family. Her dad's name is John. Her brother's name is Johnny. So she said, I want a son that's named John. So we named him Jonathan. I wish I could tell you that we named him Jonathan because it was a biblical name. But, you know, that was B.C. That was before Christ, to be honest with you. So... Uh, but she, she wanted to name him Jonathan. But nothing significant, you know, nothing of importance. There was no reason, rhyme, or really rhyme or reason why we named our sons what we named them. But Joseph named his children specifically these names. And I want, to, I want to talk to you a little bit about these names. In verse 51 and 52 of chapter 41, it says, Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. In other words, he's saying, listen, the Lord has caused me to just forget about all that turmoil that I experienced from being thrown in the pen, the rejection that I, that I experienced from my family, that, that God, God has restored me, has, has helped me to forget all of that that I suffered in my father's house. And then he calls, and then his other son in verse 52, it says, In the name of the second, he called Ephraim. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. In other words, listen, even though I'm in Egypt here and I've been a slave, I've been a prisoner, even though in my adversity, God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. You see, God had done a work in Joseph even in spite of the adversity that he faced and, and brought about healing and restoration in his life. And that's available to you and I. That when we face adversity, listen, church, God's still doing a work. When we're facing hardship, listen, God still has a purpose for it. And God had given Joseph a dream. 
And I'm and listen, every step that we see that is happening here in Joseph's life is in preparation to get him to a particular point. His purpose was that he would deliver his family, deliver Israel from this famine. And that he would he would he would restore them and hold them safe and secure, even though they were going to experience this great famine. And I love one of my favorite passages of scripture is, is, is Genesis chapter 50, verses 19 and 20. You can turn there in your Bibles for a moment. This is Joseph speaking to his brothers after Jacob had passed away, his father. And he says, it says, Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for I am in the place of God. What is he saying? He's saying, listen, I'm right where God wanted me to be. I'm right where God has me. He says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because I'm right where God wanted me to be. You see, he had to take him through a pit. He had to take him through slavery and imprisonment to get him to this place. Right now, you may be facing something of difficulty in your life. And it just may be that God has got to get you here before he can get you there. It may just be that you have to go through this in order to get to there. Joseph had to face all of that in order to get to this place. And he says in verse 20, he says, But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. See, all of that that Joseph was facing... All the hardship, all the struggle, the pit, slavery, prison, all of that was for the purpose of saving many lives, of securing Israel. We know that, we know that God had given Abraham a promise and that, uh, that, his, that through his seed he would, he would make a great nation. And we know that Jacob... We know that Jacob wrestled with God on the mountain. And in that time of wrestling, he, he tells God, I'm not going to let go of you until you bless me. And the Lord changes his name at that moment. He changes it from Jacob to Israel, he says, because you have, you have prevailed against men, both men and God. And he changed his name to Israel. This is all in working to build you know, this, this promise that he had given to Abraham. To build this great nation of Israel. And this was all part of God's plan of, of keeping that nation secure. And Joseph was a part of that plan. And even in spite of all the hardships and the adversity that he faced, God brought it back, took him from that place of, of adversity to a place of him realizing that I'm where I need to be. I'm here because God has gotten me here. I'm in the place of God. I am right where God has me. And what about you? I mean, what's your struggle this morning? Are you in the middle of your adversity? Are you in the middle of your tribulation, your trial? And, and you're thinking that, and you're thinking that, you know, there, what is the purpose of all of this? Well, it very well could be to get you to where God's taking you. You just have to remember the Lord's with you. And, the, and that the Lord can prosper you even in your affliction. Yes. That the Lord can do a great work even in spite of the great hardship that you are facing. Amen. Thank you, James tells us, count it all joy, brethren, when you're faced with many trials and tribulations. And we just can't fathom that. How in the world do we find joy in tribulations? Well, he says because there's a plan for it. There's a purpose for that tribulation. That's right. That tribulation is to grow you in character and strength and faith and to restore you. 
You know, I think about what Jesus told Peter. He said, Peter, as Satan has asked that he may sift you as wheat. And he says, but when you return to me, he says, strengthen your brother. In other words, listen, Satan's going to take you for a moment. He's going to sift you as wheat. And when he's done with you, that's when I can use you. We have to go through those hardships in life because, listen, church, that's what, that's what strengthens us in our faith and our walk. We have to remember that the Lord is with us. Joseph was never in any of these situations without the Lord not being with him. So is the Lord with you? And if the Lord is with you, then you can overcome your adversity. Amen. You can come out on top of it. Okay? It doesn't have to rule over you. Because you have, you serve a Lord who is sovereign over all creation. There's nothing outside of His realm of authority. Okay? He is sovereign over all things. And this is just for a season. And He'll get you through this. He'll use it for your betterment and for His glory. Yes. If you just hold on and let God do what God's going to do. Amen. Would you please stand? We're going to have a moment of invitation.